A child throwing up in the car is a horrible situation, but does this seem to keep happening to your child? Do you have to avoid long car rides due to your child feeling sick? This video will cover motion sickness, what causes it, as well as environmental modifications, alternative therapies, and medications that can be used to relieve symptoms. Make sure you stick around to hear tried and true methods that fellow parents from our Peds Doc Talk community on Instagram have recommended. I'm Dr. Mona, a pediatrician and mom. I help empower parents with easy to understand, evidence-based information so you can make the best choices for your family. Make sure to like this video and subscribe here to Peds Doc Talk TV to stay up to date on the latest videos and new content. Motion sickness is a type of nausea that can occur when a person is traveling in a car, boat, airplane, or other mode of transportation. The exact cause of motion sickness is not fully understood, but it is believed to be a result of conflicting signals sent to the brain by the body's sensory systems. The inner ear plays a significant role in motion sickness as it's responsible for detecting the body's position and movement in space. When a person is in motion, the inner ear sends signals to the brain that can conflict with other sensory signals, such as those from the eyes or skin. For example, let's say you are on a boat. Your inner ear detects the ongoing movement of your body due to the movement of the boat. But your visual system detects that you are standing still. You are seeing a stationary interior cabin of the ship. This conflict can cause the brain to become confused, leading to symptoms of motion sickness. Or in the case of riding in a car, your inner ear detects you are moving, but your visual system is fixated on a book or iPad in the car. Cue nausea. This concept is really important to understand, especially when we get into remedies and things to try for your kid for motion sickness. The most common symptoms of motion sickness include dizziness, nausea, vomiting, paleness, and sweating. Some children will also complain of a headache or tummy ache. Symptoms typically resolve after a few hours of stopping motion, but for some kids, the nausea can linger longer. Motion sickness is rare in children less than two years of age, but rare doesn't mean impossible. This is because toddlers typically start to experience that motion visual disconnect, likely causing the nausea associated with motion sickness. It usually increases in prevalence with age after that point, peaking around nine years of age and then decreasing as the child grows and reaches adulthood. But I do know some adults who suffer from motion sickness, so it all depends on the person. There's also a genetic component. If one parent has it, there's a higher chance that a child will have it. Finally, other factors that can contribute to motion sickness include anxiety, stress, and a person's susceptibility to nausea at baseline. Certain medications or medical conditions can also increase the likelihood of experiencing motion sickness. For example, a history of migraines increases a child's risk of experiencing motion sickness. Earlier, I mentioned that a lot of motion sickness is connected to that disconnect between the physical feeling of movement and visual input. So reading a book or looking at a phone or iPad can increase this feeling in some people. Strategies to prevent motion sickness can be divided into three categories, environmental modifications, complementary and alternative treatments, and medications. A few tricks to control your environment can help with symptom relief. It is helpful to have your child look at the horizon or a distant stationary object. For kids, especially younger kids, this can be hard to control. But during car rides, you can put window clings on the front mirror or play a game of I spy picking objects in the distance. Try to avoid them reading or looking at a screen because this can increase the conflict between their visual cues and their inner ear sense of movement. This is a large reason why we as a family don't allow screens or devices in the car. My husband has really bad motion sickness and I don't want my son to have it too. If your child uses devices without any issue, go for it and use them. Again, I know this can be tough with long car rides, but if your little one is prone to motion sickness, you could try audiobooks or music to entertain them or car ride games. Also, think about the seating arrangements and adjust it when you can for safety. 
In a boat, a lower deck and midship cabin is best. In a plane, the best seat can be over the front edge of the wing where there's less movement of the plane. In a car, the front seat is the best option for motion sickness, but that is not a safe option for children under the age of 13. For younger children, the middle seat is often preferred, and if it's a three-row car, sit in the second row instead of the third. The idea is wherever there is less movement or bouncing, the better. But remember, safety is important too. For kids in car seats, if the car seat has multiple positions, you could try adjusting the seat so they're upright as possible, safety in mind. I polled my followers on Instagram for what worked for them and their child for motion sickness. Another suggestion was removing the safety mirror behind the child's car seat if they're rear facing. This helps reduce conflicting visual feedback when they're looking in the mirror and feeling the motion. This is a good option weighing benefit and risk. Many followers also reported that their child's symptoms improved when they switched their car seat from rear facing to forward facing. This makes sense because they can now look out the front window and their visual cues will be consistent with the movement their body is sensing and they can also look out into the horizon. Now remember, legally, you can't move your child forward facing until two in many states and ideally it's best to keep them rear facing as long as allowed by the car seat manufacturer. But if motion sickness is very bad and you have tried other remedies, moving them forward facing can be a conversation you have with your child's clinician understanding benefit and risk. There's no judgment here, but try other tips in this video before you jump to moving them forward facing. And remember, you can't do that before too. In addition to these recommended measures, alternative treatments include the use of ginger and acupressure bands. C bands were the most recommended intervention by my followers on Instagram. Many people said that they were a game changer for their child and improved, if not resolved, their motion sickness. These are bands that are applied to both wrists to prevent symptoms, but can also be worn after symptoms have already begun. They are a bracelet that has a button on it that acts to apply pressure at the P6 acupressure point on the anterior wrist. It has been shown to be effective in some, but not all, according to research studies. There is very little risk with it since it's basically a bracelet, so it may be worth considering trying this for your child if age appropriate. For older children over the age of five, hard ginger candies can be helpful to eliminate sickness. This should not be used in children younger than five due to the risk of choking on candy. Randomized trials have shown reduced symptoms in people pre-treated with ginger before getting on a ship or riding in a car. You can also peel fresh ginger, cut it up into little chunks and allow them to chew on it, releasing that ginger remedy. Another simple tip for a child who follows commands is to have them close their eyes to remove the sensory confusion that can cause motion sickness. If you are avoiding screens or reading, you're having your child look out into the distance and using any of the above recommendations and it's not working, you can stop your car as soon as possible that's safe and let your child get out and walk around. If you are on a long car trip, you may have to make frequent short stops if possible. In terms of snacking and meals, give your child a light snack before a trip that can cause motion sickness. This relieves the hunger pains that can add to symptoms but avoid a large meal, as this can upset the stomach, leading to nausea and vomiting. Think Goldilocks and the Three Bears, a happy spot and a happy medium. Distract your child by singing, talking, or letting them pick out their favorite music. If you need to stop because there's nausea, remove them from the car and have them lie on their back or side for a few minutes with their eyes closed. Apply a cool cloth on the forehead. Personally, I also think essential oils can help here by distracting your child during nauseous episodes. This is only useful if the child is older than four and can hold the container without spilling it or drinking it. Sniffing scents like lavender can take a child's mind off the nausea with your conversation and redirection as well. Here are some other tips also backed by my Instagram followers. Increasing airflow, whether with open windows, vents, or a handheld fan. Sniff an alcohol pad, which by the way is great for pregnancy nausea too. Keep the car a cooler temperature. Try to plan longer drives for when kids are sleeping. I'm okay with this as motion sickness impacts older toddlers and not newborns or infants. For newborns and infants, we'd want check-ins if they're sleeping in a car seat every two to three hours or with a mirror in your car. Finally, not a tip to prevent motion sickness, but it is helpful to have supplies ready in case vomiting does occur. If you can teach your child to use a vomit bag and have cleaning supplies and a change of clothes in the car ready, just in case, 
it can reduce the stress of everyone involved. If you've tried the conservative measures I already mentioned and symptoms have persisted, it may be worth considering the use of medications. Antihistamines such as Dramamine or Dramamine Less Drowsy are the most common medications used to treat motion sickness in children. Benadryl used to be popular, but has fallen out of favor due to its highly sedating properties. Diphenhydronate or Dramamine is available as a tablet or chewable tablet and is FDA approved for children two years and older. Meclizine, which is Dramamine Less Drowsy, is approved for children 12 years and older and is also available in chewable tablets or swallow tablets. Diphenhydronate is generally more effective than meclizine, but meclizine has a longer duration of action and only needs to be taken once a day, as opposed to dimenhydronate, which needs to be taken every four to six hours. These medications should be given 30 to 60 minutes before the travel activity begins. The most common side effect seen with these medications is drowsiness, so talk to your child's clinician to see if they think any of these medications could be a good fit. Non-sedating antihistamines like Allegra, Claritin, or Zyrtec do not appear to be effective at preventing motion sickness and therefore are not typically recommended. Ondanstranon, brand name is Zofran, is a prescription anti-nausea medication, but currently there's no evidence that it's effective at preventing motion sickness and it's not typically recommended. It may be beneficial to have this on hand if your child is having repetitive nausea episodes while riding in a car that's leading to vomiting. I'd recommend seeing your child's clinician if you've tried all the appropriate strategies for your child and symptoms aren't improving, or if they're experiencing symptoms like dizziness or vomiting outside of travel time. There are other causes of dizziness and vomiting they may want to rule out, or they may have other interventions they may like to try. Well, I sure hope you can take your next trip vomit free. But as someone married to someone with motion sickness, I know it's not always a perfect scenario to avoid these symptoms. I hope you found this video helpful. Has your child ever experienced motion sickness? What worked for them? Please leave questions or comments below. I would love to hear about your experiences and what's worked. Please like and share this video and make sure to subscribe to be the first to know about new videos published. I'll see you all next time for another video here on Peds Doc Talk TV. Happy travels.